My buddy needs a box to display his flag and all his army medals, so let's build him one. I'm going to start by taking some measurements of the flag as it's folded and then in relation to how big a box would be around it. I have this piece of 1x12 oak that I'm going to use. I'm ripping it into smaller strips. You can see how warped it is. That's the problem with wide boards like this. They tend to cup. But since we're ripping it into smaller strips, we're going to rip the cup out of it. Notice the burn marks on the edge of the board. That's because it's so warped it's binding on the saw. But not to worry, we're about to take care of those. Here I've ganged them together and I'm running them through the planer on edge to get rid of all the burn marks. Now I'm going to lower the planer and run them through on the faces to get rid of any blemishes there. Now with the miter saw I'm 45 in the corners so we can join them together in a box form. And now with a little glue and a few brad nails, we fasten them together into the box. Now for the back of the box, I have a piece of half inch plywood. I'm going to give it a light sanding and then we're going to glue and brad it into the box. Now we need to figure out the dividers that hold the flag. So after some careful layout and measuring, I think we've got it. This angle gauge tells me what angle to cut the miters. We're using some of the same oak, but we're gonna rip it a little bit thinner. We've got the miter saw set at the angle that our bevel gauge said, and we're gonna cut our pieces. Now a test fit. Perfect. Now it's time to put them in permanently. A little glue and some brad should do the trick. Now it's time to make the lid. We're using the same oak, but we're ripping it a little thinner this time. And we're gonna put a nice bead detail on the outside. So we put the beading bit in the router table. There you go, looks nice. Now we need to route a rabbit in the back side for the glass to recess in. For that we're using this straight cutting bit. And there you see a nice rabbit in the back. Now we're going to miter the corners and assemble it like we did the box. Now a little glue and some pin nails will hold it together. Now let's turn our attention to the inside of the box. We're going to use one inch foam as the backing. We're trimming it up with the utility knife to fit inside the box. Now that it fits the overall dimensions, we need to cut out the section where the flag goes. 
As I pound down on the foam, the flag divider is leaving an impression in the surface. Here you can see where we need to cut. Just a little bit of trimming here and there to fine tune the fit. There we go, perfect. Now I need to wrap the foam in black felt. I've got thumbtacks to secure the felt to the foam. I decided to move this portion of the project inside to the kitchen table to avoid getting sawdust all over the black felt. Now it's time to put some hinges on the box. Here I'm mortising the hinges on the box side. Now I'm attaching the hinges to the box side. And now I'm attaching them to the lid itself, making sure everything lines up perfectly. Tiny Tinkerer suggested that we use these small, powerful magnets to hold the lid shut. I think that's a stellar idea, Tiny Tinkerer. Now we need to drill holes so that the magnets will mount flush with the surface. To stick to the magnets, we're going to put screws in the lid. To line it up, I put the screw in the hole, and when I tap on it, the screw sticks in the lid, and I know exactly where to drill the hole for the screw. Now to secure the magnets in the hole. We're going to use this 5 minute epoxy. Little gentle persuasion with a block and a hammer makes sure that they're embedded properly. Acetone cleans up any epoxy that squeezed out. I must admit I have an unhealthy obsession with this classic cherry stain, but the results speak for themselves. It looks really good, so I use it a lot. I like to use colored putty to fill nail holes. Notice that this one says red mahogany. You don't always have to use the same name as what the stain is. The most important thing is that the color matches. Now for polyurethane. I like the gloss polyurethane for this and I put three coats on it and allow it to dry in between as per the directions on the can. We need to install a picture hanger on the back. I got the idea to recess it so that the box would sit flush with the wall. I'm just using a large Forstner bit to drill a hole partially through the back. This allows the picture hanger to drop down in the hole and sit flush with the back. And this is an up close look at what it looks like. We're going to use silicone to hold the glass in the lid. 
I'm putting silicone around the edges, careful not to get too much. And now it's time to put the glass into the silicone bead. And after adequate drying time, this is the finished product. You can see there's a perfect amount of space to hold all the medals and ribbons. And when paired with his certificate of retirement, this makes an awesome tribute for my veteran friend. A special thanks to all of those out there who serve this great country. And as always, thanks for watching.